Yes, it was indeed a wonderful experience, providing a rich treasury of memories. Pan American World Airways Clipper Flight 100 nears its destination. A wonderful journey will soon be over. I mean, look, we haven't had in the U.S. a crash of a major U.S. airline for 19 years. In 1958, Frank Sinatra painted the picture of aviation as simple as, come fly with me, just hop on a plane and go. 68 years later, that vision seems far off. I left the Air Force in 1965, went to work at Pan Am. We had a, had a crash within a day or two of the time I arrived there. The late 60s, early 70s were certainly hijackings were were more common. In the 1960s and 70s, hijackings and plane crashes were common. Author Brendan Corner wrote a book called The Golden Years of Hijackings. In his book, he discusses more than 130 American hijackings between 1968 and 1972. We were having problems with back then was uh, somebody gets on an airplane and says, take me to Cuba. In order to deal with that, they put up uh, some security that people would walk through on the way to the airplane. We as a society were more reactionary and 9-11 made us again reactionary. So we started fortifying things and putting things in place to strengthen that. As Matt just mentioned, we have a breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into oh, if there were many people in the building. Oh, another one just hit. Something else just hit. A very large plane just oh. flew directly over my building, and there's been another collision. Can you see it? I yeah. can see it on this shot. Oh, my God. Something else has just hit. From the tragic events on that day, the way we looked at aviation would change drastically. President Bush signed the Aviation Transportation Security Act into law shortly after September 11th, requiring the government to oversee air travel screenings in November 2001. This was the birth of TSA. Today we take permanent and aggressive steps to improve the security of our airways. And the president made that call to roll out TSA. Never before had we rolled out that large of a federal agency in a short period of time. And uh, I still, to this day, commending for his decision to do that. Uh, we're not a perfect agency, but we're certainly working towards that perfection. Before TSA, airport security was private. It was ran by airports or even airlines, not the federal government. People who were running the security were not trained. They were not law enforcement people. They were not armed. We didn't take it seriously either because we knew they did. But you could bring grandpa's pocket knife. You know, you could bring your Zippo lighter. You could bring your torch lighter if you were a cigar smoker, your cigar cutter a variety of other things. You certainly didn't have to take your shoes off and you could take all of those items and never be scrutinized for it. And that certainly changed since then. A lot of times we didn't even go through through security. We knew ways to get around it. I know that that surprised the public, but it didn't surprise anybody who's in the aviation industry. We knew that the, that the security we had then was just a facade. Waiting at the gate with loved ones before boarding is also a thing of the past. The joy of having my family come out and sit in the gate area with me as we were getting ready to be sent off somewhere and you know the emotions flowing right there at the gate then getting on the plane when 9 11 happened i wasn't flying at the time and i was grateful that i wasn't flying because the concept of somebody being able to take over a flight and crash it into a building is about as big a fear as you can possibly have this is Hugh Fisher. For the majority of his adult life, he's had a phobia of flying. All of this happened well before 9-11, but those events only added to his fear. It was, it was terrifying because it was adding one more thing that could go wrong on an airplane. And it wasn't just, was I gonna be sick? It was, was I gonna crash into a building you know, at, at uh, 500 miles an hour? But one thing that has put Fisher's fears at ease is the added measures by TSA. We found a way to stop a lot of it and to put anyone who's trying to take down a plane or hijack it at risk. Added gate security hasn't been the only change over the past 20 years. Ever since the golden age of hijackings, one of the biggest issues was always easy access to the cockpit. A six-year-old kid could kick them open. They were really intentionally flimsy because if you crashed an airplane, that kind of a door could not trap you in the cockpit. As pilots in the pilots' union became more concerned about um, hijacking, we said to the FAA, we'd like to have secure doors. The FAA says, no, you don't want them. You could get trapped in there. We said, yes, we do. They said, you're not getting them. Well, after 9-11, I could say that we immediately got the cockpit doors, but that's not quite true. Cockpit doors wouldn't change for another 19 months after 
if we had just had good cockpit doors before 9-11, that would have stopped 9-11 from happening. All this used to be far beyond the wildest dream of any of us. Today, Captain Tom is a retired commercial pilot helping thousands of people overcome the fear of flying. Well, I wouldn't have flown unless I absolutely had to have flown 20 years ago. I found a lot of excuses to not fly. And nothing in the world feels as bad as copping out. And then you have to live with that, that guilt of doing that. During the flight, how many things happen that actually trigger the release of stress hormones? Things like an unexpected noise or the movement of the plane. Things like that would trigger stress hormones. They don't happen constantly. For many, it's not just the events of 9-11 that trigger fears, but for some, it's what we see on the silver screen. Well, I think it's mostly <laughs> been informed by Hollywood movies. Uh, they put things in the movies mostly that can't happen. That's where people get this misinformation about how they think dangerous flying is. But in fact, that's what people say, how dangerous is takeoff? And I say, well, look, wait a minute, it isn't, but just look at your question. How dangerous is it? It's not dangerous. We don't paint ourselves in a corner. From tighter security measures to the plane itself, a lot has changed and continues to change with each potential threat. How safe is it to fly uh, today? If I put my family members on there, you can bet it's, it's safe. That's the best, the best answer I can give you. It is a pain in the rear end but I've considered a safety issue that they're going way out of their way to make sure that if somebody wanted to do something evil, uh, every means that we know how to prevent that is being taken care of. It's okay to ask the why. Why do we do certain things? And there's nothing wrong with that, and we need to be more patient of explaining the why and making sure that, that uh, we're doing a better job of explaining that. There is a reason for everything that we do. This year, TSA turns 20. Captain Tom says that the golden years of aviation that Frank Sinatra once painted in 1958 may be long and gone, but traveling by air has never been safer. Yes, it was indeed a wonderful experience, providing a rich treasury of memories to be cherished and relived as long as memories last. Hey everyone, Cody Broadway here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out the NBCLX YouTube channel. Be sure to click here for more videos and also click here to subscribe to join the NBCLX community.